When I first turned 40, I have to be honest with you, my face was like, I was like, 40? 40? Now, my forehead didn't move much because of the Botox, but um, <laughs> I was really shocked. You know, I was 40, and then all of a sudden I started thinking, you know what? I'm 40. This is awesome. I know every thing there is to know in this whole world. That is what you will feel, young people. When you, you feel that way. Now there's 50-year-olds like, you don't know anything. But anyway... The, the thing is, it's like I feel like I can give sage, wise advice now. When a young woman comes up to me and asks me dating advice, like, so I'm dating this guy, and I'm not really sure, like, what he thinks about me, but, like, I feel like I like him, and I'm not really certain what to do, and you're, like, a lot older than me, so, like, just wondering, what do you think I should do? I can say something like, well, I think you should just relax, draw a warm bath, and then open a vein. Because I cannot stand the dumb girls, <laughs> dare I say dumb bitches, that are in their 20s these days. Not everyone, but a lot of them. I don't understand. You know, this whole concept of like the girls who talk upward and everything they say goes up at the end of their senses. And the only thing that doesn't go up is when they go, thank you. And they all sound the same, and they all walk around these little clusters of irritation all throughout the United States. <laughs> Actually, it's not true. They have that one friend in the group who sticks out a little bit. She has that really raspy party voice, right? She's the one who goes right up to the bar, turns around to all of her friends, and goes, let's do shots, you guys! Shots party! <laughs> like, her voice sounds like the personification of bad choices. Yeah, that girl, I don't know. And they all wear their Ugg boots. I hate Ugg boots. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I know a lot of girls like them here. Let me just, look, I'm a, I'm a spiked heel girl, okay? That's the way it goes. The, the, I know a lot of girls think they're cute and they're sexy. Not one guy in this room finds Ugg boots cute or sexy, okay? Yeah. That is why strippers don't wear Ugg boots. Yeah. Because they look like a pile of dirty hamburger buns. They're disgusting, but they all were. And, and it's weird because I never understood when I would see a girl with an engagement ring on, like in this little group, that some guy could look at a girl who has the potential to say something like, and then she walked into the party and she's wearing the same goddamn dress as I was wearing. And I was like, what the hell? Because we talked about this. And he's like, I have to have that for the rest of my life. And I think Kim Kardashian started it all. I really do. She started this whole thing. Look, why is she still alive? Can someone explain this to me? Like, where's the DC sniper when you need him? That guy... That guy would have been a hero. You know what I mean? He'd just pop her right off. It's just going to get worse. I'm just letting you know that. Uh, You'll see Kim Kardashian in an interview and she'll say something like, I just think it's awful that people judge me because, you know, really, they don't even know me. I'm like, no, we saw your vagina, remember? <laughs> yeah, we know you pretty well inside and out, yeah. Yeah, we're gonna judge you because you're a whore. That's the way it goes. <laughs> Do you know she made $65 million last year? $65 million, because she has a nice ass and she's a whore, that's it, right? And what really bothers me is, as a professional woman who's really trying to make it in this business, I have a nice ass and I'm a whore. I've never made $65 million from it. Is she some sort of pioneer? I had no idea. But she gets her own show, right? She gets her own show. Her sister who looks like a man, she gets her own show. Siri, oh please, she totally looks like a dude. You cannot, she is disgusting. Uh, it just bothers me. Look, all the comedians up here, we all want to get our own show. That's our whole goal. You want to get your own show, you work hard, you try to hone your craft, get it down. And the people that get shows on TV nowadays, they're all like losers or weirdos or drug addicts or stupid. Have you seen that show, My Strange Addiction? Have you watched this at all? Okay, for those of you who don't know, just use deductive reasoning, My Strange Addiction. Figure it out. There is a guy on it half hour time slot for this guy who has sex with his car. That's what he does. He has sex with a car. He rubs the steering wheel. He gets onto the car and molests it. I don't know what he, there's the tailpipe is there. I'm just assuming that's happening. And he has
has to kind of come out to his friends, which is really weird, because I can't imagine one of my friends coming up and telling me this stuff, but his friends, they're so cute. They're like, I'm just trying to understand where Peter's coming from. Like, nobody understands where the hell Peter's coming from unless they have sex with their car. There's no, who has, does anybody here want to admit to having sex with their car? I don't understand. Here's the thing, too. It's a Dodge Neon. Isn't that weird? That guy totally settled. If you had a Maserati, you might want to have sex with your car. And then there was another, there's a girl on the same show who eats the insides of couch cushions. Yeah, she thinks a futon is a snack. And uh, they had a therapist come out and she analyzed the situation. She goes, well, you have to understand that Tiffany does this because she was assaulted. I'm like, by a couch? Why would you eat the inside of a cat? Why don't you just do drugs like everybody else who's assaulted? What is wrong? Like, when does it go from heroin to ottoman? That's what I'm trying to understand. But she gets her own show. All these people get their own show. I'm not going to get my own show until I'm like a massive screw up, until I'm like a, like a 62 year old hoarder from Western Pennsylvania, you know, and my house is covered in ants and banana peels and. People walk in, they trip over a pile of bones and go, did you even know you had cats? <laughs> I don't understand anything anymore. I really don't. I don't get it. It's, maybe it's just the getting older thing. Like, I, I don't understand why people don't uh, raise their kids anymore. Like, they don't discipline them at all anymore. Nobody moves their kids out of the way. What is this crap? Like, first of all, their stroller is the size of this stage, and they will still not move it for you. Because they're like, I made that, I made it. See, I made it. I'm like, yeah, it's annoying me. It's annoying me. The thing you made is annoying to me. I was, like, I was behind this guy and his daughter in the subway, and uh, she was about this tall. She had a yellow dress and yellow shoes and yellow hat and yellow tights. She's like a buttery little ball of crap in my way. And the father, <laughs> father's holding her hand out here. Then he has her stroller in his other hand. So they're like 15 feet wide. They're walking up this giant staircase. And every time the little girl took a step up the stairs, She'd go, step, step, daddy, step, step, daddy, step, step, daddy. There's 137 steps to go. <laughs> and there was a group of like 50 of us behind them who were like, move it, bitch. <laughs> but the worst part was the father had this look on his face like, wow, my little girl can walk. Like, that's not a miracle. That's not a miracle. That's what she's supposed to do, right? If she were at the base of the stairs in a wheelchair and then stood up and then said, Step, step, daddy, I'd be like, That's a miracle! <laughs> There'd be a camera crew, people would be crying, it'd be awesome. But that wasn't the case for this little girl. So I think her father should just grab her by her little wrist and throw her up the damn stairs the way our parents used to do it, man. My mother used to hit us with the same wooden spoon she just baked us a birthday cake with. <laughs> By applause, who got hit here? Who got hit? Let's hear it. Who got hit? Okay, yeah, see? Yeah. A lot. And you can always tell who got hit the hardest because they raised their hands, like these people in the back. <laughs> so the weapon of choice. Will anybody else get a wooden spoon? Any wooden spoon? Wooden spoon? Okay, hairbrush, Latinos, sandals. Right? Black people, pick your own switch, right? That's where it goes. <laughs> Black people who live in New York, are, I don't even know what a switch is. She's like, pick it. You're like, all right. Uh. The cross-cultural weapon was the belt, though. Right? Remember the belt? It's such a sentimental topic, isn't it? We're like, I got hit with a belt, too. I love it. <sighs> the best answer I've ever heard from an audience member so far was a Hot Wheels track. Can you imagine getting beaten with your own toys? That's awesome, right? <laughs> but we don't hit our kids anymore. Can't hit your kids, can't hit. First of all, you have to name your kid a really stupid name. That's the big trend nowadays, right? Have you talked to a pregnant friend of yours about the name, their thing? First of all, if you name your kid something and you tell your friend and your friend goes, well, that's different, they hate it. They hate it, they hate it, they hate it, and everyone's gonna hate it forever and ever and ever. Like one of my pregnant friends, she goes, well, if it's a boy, I think we're gonna name him Piper Blaze. <laughs> I wanted to punch her in the stomach just to prevent this from happening. <laughs> I, 
like heard a, heard a woman calling after her son. She goes, Galahad, you forgot your jacket. I was like, why don't you just name him Nancy McPansy ass? I don't know, man. I don't know why we give our kids trophies when they lose. That's a brilliant scheme, isn't it? Isn't that wonderful? That's a big thing. Thank you, Suburbia, for that. I, don't, I never understand this whole concept. Because the whole deal is people are like, I want my kid to feel like a winner, right? Well, do you want him to be a winner? Or do you want him to feel like a winner? Because there's a big difference, right? And there's nothing worse than a loser who thinks he's a winner. Those are the worst in the world. By the way, that's the whole cast of the Jersey Shore, in case you were wondering. They all think that. And the thing is, this job is not always easy. Being a stand-up comic is not always easy. You never know when people, you guys are a hot crowd, you're a lot of fun. Sometimes it's awful, it really is. You, just, you don't get laughs, blah, 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 blah. And, and the thing is, I, I feel like I just totally lost my train of thought in the middle of a joke, but that's okay. I'll get it back, I'll get it back. It's returning, hold on, it's coming. I smoked too much weed, it's all right. Uh, this is what happened. No, here's the thing, see, I believe that my People think their kids need to feel good all the time. My, I'm not up here risking failure constantly because my parents told me I was the winner every day. You know, See, my parents love me enough to tell me I'd never amount to anything. Do you understand where I'm coming from? That's where we need to get back to with our children. I never understand why people dress their kids like sluts. That's the weirdest thing to me, too. Little girls like sluts. Like there, I saw a guy walking his daughter down the street. She was maybe seven. She had uh, the word juicy written across her ass. Um, I think any father who allows their seven-year-old daughter to wear sweatpants with the word juicy written across her ass should be put in prison for child endangerment. I really do. I really do. And uh, while he's in prison, his bright orange jumpsuit should have the word juicy written right across <laughs> I don't know. I got married about a year ago. That's, uh, oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you, I appreciate it. Thank you. I'm not sure if it's gonna work out. I, um, if you're not married, when you get married, the things you really loved about your spouse before you got married, you're gonna, you're gonna hate about your spouse once you get married. Like, my husband's one of those super organized people. Like, he likes to put syrup in every single square of his waffle. Like, he looks like those guys on CSI doing DNA testing, you know, and they put that stuff in there. And at first I would call my friends, be like, oh my God, you have to see this thing he does with his syrup. It is so, now I'm like, cut the crap with the waffle. Seriously, are we done? Are we done, Mrs. Butterworth? We're done now? I got worried, I got worried. We were fighting a lot as newlyweds, fighting. So I called my parents who have been married for 53 years. I said, mom, what do I do? She goes, honey, the first year of marriage is the most difficult year. It's gonna be awful, There's ups and downs. You're gonna hate each other. My dad agreed with her and said every year after that's exactly like the first one. Well, what brings me joy in this world is, uh, is listening to people's voices. I love the way people speak. I like mimicking, and sometimes I feel that people get saddled into who they are uh, in their lives by the way they speak. Like, if you meet a woman who's about this tall, and she talks like this, and all the friends talk like this, and she's lived on the Upper East Side for 427 years, that woman's going to do nothing but return stuff to Bloomingdale's for the rest of her life. You will never hear her be like a phone sex operator, right? She'll never say something like, what am I wearing? Uh, well, I have a Gloria Vanderbilt pantsuit on and um, I'm very moist. Uh, And sometimes I take the bus in Brooklyn with like the really tough, like gonna kill me Puerto Rican girls. On the, and, uh, I'll listen to them say things like this one girl goes, yo, so I'm thinking about studying medicine, you know what I'm saying? Cause those suckers make a lot of money, you know what I'm saying, damn. So I was trying to picture her. I was trying to picture her as maybe a cardiologist and uh, <laughs> me going in for my exam and she walks out and goes, yo, so we was like looking at the pictures of your ticket, you know what I'm saying, okay. <laughs> So like your heart is supposed to be going like ba boom, ba boom, ba boom, right? And instead it's like bam, 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 like extra defibrillations and shit. <laughs> so we're thinking we're gonna need to start cutting you, you know what I'm saying? Cause like, cause otherwise you're gonna be going like me. I'm Veronica Mo